Yeah. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Matthias. Uh, I'm the CEO of MTech Consulting. Uh, I'm here today to talk about robotics and the production line of the future. And uh, I assume that there are some people in the crowd here that are fairly interested in hardware, right? Anyone who is not? Yeah, okay, sorry. I kind of swim out of picture. Um, so, <coughs> what I would like to talk about today is, is my interpretation of Industry 4.0. So, any one of you that has a uh, desire or will or need for production, this is my view on what will happen. Um, I will show you some videos from ABB Yumi uh, and try to see where the trends are going. So. I will start off. Anyone has seen this robot before? The Yumi? Cool. Anybody that likes it? Me too. So, I'll show you a video of the f first truly collaborative robot. This is, I would say that this is the best invention in sliced bread. <laughs> which I also like. So, let's see if I can start. Ah. Should be able to get this one up and running. Whoops. Doesn't hardware doesn't like me. Better turn the mouse around. So hopefully it starts. So what you see now is the first truly collaborative robot. It can work side by side with a human. Uh, it has motion sensors, so if you touch it, it will stop. It doesn't require these immense safe defenses or cages. It's extremely repetitive. It's extremely simple to program. And um, what I believe is that we're going to see a lot of these ones coming out. Uh, it was launched by ABB in May, two years ago. And as far as I understand, they are really pushing it now to deliver a lot of these to the market. So, <coughs> if you think about it, Henry Ford, MTM, mean time measurement back in 1920s, this is the full capability of, of dual hand motion. It has a vision system built in inside the hand. It has a suction um, nozzle. It has uh, grippers that you can actually 3D print. So you can adapt your own uh, manufacturing process. Very, very simple. So <coughs> why? Do I believe that this one is going to be a hit? Well, first of all, we have a big challenge. Uh, anyone here that has manufacturing in, in Asia? Some of you guys, yeah? I'm blessed to be able to travel 300 days a year. Uh, I've been living in Africa for the last seven and a half years. I've been living in China for five years. I've uh, been running my consultancy company for the last 15 years, uh, doing different projects. Everyone's moving to China. Everyone's moving to Asia. Right now, uh, the engineering cost in China is actually higher than in Sweden. So they're moving back. The Chinese market is now losing a lot of manufacturing to Eastern Europe. One of the reasons for this is as well that the employee turnover in the Chinese companies specifically, and some companies actually go beyond 10% a month. Which means that you need to constantly retrain your staff. You're going to have a lot of, of product variations and quality variations over time. And the company that's going to be successful are the ones that actually maintain their people. So they're constantly training new stuff all the time because they're losing them and they're getting them in. So, and we all know that if the hardware fails, the business stops, right? So the key is the hardware. Ask WSI. So we can't afford to have products that fail. Take the Samsung battery scandal, where they've lost, I don't know how many billions, uh, due to the fact that they didn't perform their design right, 
they didn't do the product ver uh, verification and validation right. And now the brand Samsung is suffering. I, get, I guess that there are at least a couple of Googles and, and Apples inside this room now, people developing really cool hardware that's going to hit the market running. For us, production is key. And up until today, automation has been very, very costly because we need to have all these very inefficient cages, all these security solutions. You have to have really high-skilled engineers to, to program. But I think those days are gone. And most importantly, that variations comes from humans in production, very much. Not only, also due to bad maintenance, but... So, we tried to make a little bit of a Vitruvian Yumi. Um, what we're going to see, I'm going to jump down to the last point here. IoT. Introduction of IoT, I believe, is going to be an introduction of an ultra-high volume, ultra-high mix scenario. We're going to be producing much, much higher series in much shorter time. More of a power will be put to the market departments. So they're going to be driving the, the product development. You guys, with all the tools that are available and your extraordinary skills, you're going to be launching products. And today with all the web shops and all the distribution channels, you're going to hit the market much faster. It's much simpler today to become a hardware supplier and a product owner than it ever have been, has been. Also, traceability. The American Department of Defense, two years ago, launched a report stating that 8.9 billion US dollars was their impact due to counterfeit components. So, traceability. We need to know what we're producing because we can't build an, an enormous customer care unit. We can't afford to have a callback campaign on the size of Samsung. We can do that with robots. We can do that with, with uh, timestamps in the production. Also, ERP connectivity. One of the key success factors of Apple is that they know when they launch and they know when they kill the product. So their ramp up curve for production is under full control, which means that their integration to the ERP system as well as the manufacturing execution syst systems are, are thorough. So they know when they're going to launch a product. They know what type of problems they're going to predict. They're going to see, they know the, the expectancy rate of, of a product. They know when they're going to uh, kill it. We've been through a, a project for a, a client in, in Middle East. They had 480 different products under development. None of them was released to the market. So they spent an enormous amount of money on, uh, developing products, not releasing them. I will show you here another video. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Let's see if I get this one to run. As I said, I love hardware. Hardware doesn't love me. Come on. As you can see there, the, the robot is collaborating with humans. Of course, the fixtures here, this is a demo setup, but it shows the ability to, to work very closely to, with the robot. This uh, suction nozzle. So imagine a situation where you can 3D print your fixtures, you can 3D print your tools, you can set the production line up, and you can balance it, you can analyze it, you can understand the cost on a very, very early stage. This has not been able to do, be done before due to labor laws and, and security laws. See the impact there where, where it touches the robot. This is very much a commercial for ABB, by the way. This is, I really like this. 
So, having this one available on a resource pool would allow companies like yourself to launch products much faster, to try it out. Is it actually buildable? Is it designed to be produced? And what stops it from, from being produced at a high level of quality and cost? Or right, sorry, high level of quality, low level of cost. Of course, there's a, a weight limit to this one. Uh, it's, I think it handles a kilo of units. Otherwise, you could be creating frisbees in production. So, coming into the method part. This is something that we try to integrate as, in as many places as possible. Yeah, four minutes, yeah. Uh, a U-cell. Any one of you seen a man, uh, mobile phone manufacturing or a high volume manufacturing, you will see those type of cells around where we have to focus on material management. We have to make sure that the, the method development is actually done already on the design stage. Uh, it's really easy to, to, to transfer products in a cell setup like this. And here is one of the key words, remote and, and rapid prototyping. We're going to see services popping up which allows for remote prototyping, rapid prototyping by, by 3D uh, printer support, um, web connectivity and so on. And I will take the last one, so I'm not losing the Q&A. But <coughs> once again, coming back to the traceability part, uh, connectivity to the ERP of the manufacturer would allow for, for a certificate of, of authenticity on components. This picture shows an, an instant share of consumption, so the whole supply chain should, at the point of information, be shared with everyone. So when I see a demand increase or decrease, I should be able to see that in my ERP system instantly, in the whole supply chain. So. Very briefly, I will save at least one minute. Uh, this is what we see as a trend development, going from a high volume, uh, low mix scenario, moving over now for the, for the um, cross section, where we're going to see the traditional products moving on to a higher mix, but on a fairly increased volume, but IoT going to an ultra high volume, ultra high mix. And this is, I believe, that the robotics will support in that, and I believe that your work is what makes it happen. What do you mean with mix? Uh, shorter uh, series, shorter time to market uh, for, the, for the product owners. As I said, I, I believe that the market departments will drive the product development. So, yeah, some of the focus areas. I only have one fo 140 left. You've got a time on the clock. Okay. So basically, in order to make this happen, higher volume, higher mix requires a, a full product process and business focus. Uh, having a very, very only design focus will maybe not be sufficient for the future. Typical up left is uh, Apple's or the old Nokia. I have another. I can show you a demo where they integrated this robot into candy manufacturing. Yeah. Come on. Time is running. Move that over. Yeah. He's speaking English. Um. Those ones are sorted out, packed, using a Yumi that is located in the center of the robot cell. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Thank you. <laughs>